So hey y'all, I'm back with another video. So tonight's video is yet again another Trauma Chats video podcast edition. So by the title, we're gonna be talking about the death of the influencer. This is essentially a part two of the video I did recently about it girls falling off. And I feel like I could have gone so much deeper with that topic, but I was really just kind of being surface level because we were specifically talking about it girls. But I feel like in modern times, because it girls can be deemed as influencers and there are hundreds and thousands of influencers that are technically not it girls there is a lot more that we can add to why it girls are falling off as well as why influencer culture is not as revered as it used to be i really wanted to talk about this being that yes i myself i am considered an influencer but i've been on the internet for so long i made my first social media account in fifth grade when i had a myspace account why i had a myspace account at 10 years old i don't know but i do feel like back then the scariness and vulgarity of the internet wasn't as crazy as it is now like i also had an aim chat room messenger and i I feel like back then it was just something to do versus it being what the internet is today. So even though a 10 year old shouldn't be on the internet per se, back then, which was like 2007, I guess, the internet was still so new and fresh that all of the sub terms that we have now, such as influencer and content creator and brand developer, all of that was in existence. It was still a pretty innocent platform. Now that notwithstanding, that was my first time being on the internet. MySpace made everybody feel like we were five star tech experts. We were coding our own backgrounds. We had top eight. We also really got creative with how we designed our profiles and pages. I feel like Instagram and Facebook could bring back that feature just to get more people going back to their platforms, being that a lot of people are more interested in TikTok these days. However, that was the start for me. And then I had a Facebook in sixth grade. I know I made a Tumblr in seventh grade and I was just an internet junkie. So the fact that I'm an influencer now isn't necessarily a surprise to me, but it is a surprise that I've been able to make a career out of this because that was considered so unorthodox especially coming from a Nigerian household. So I've seen all of these eras of social media through pretty much every platform and especially YouTube and Instagram. MySpace has come and gone. I would say Tumblr has come and gone. Vine has come and gone. But the main social media platforms with the exception of TikTok, I've been there from the beginning up until now. And the common denominator that I have now witnessed is the evolution of the influencer. And in the year 2023, I feel like being an influencer is not that much of a commodity, not as revered, not as important and not as glamorous as it once was. And I wanna get to the bottom of that. So I've broken this video down into three main talking points. So without further ado, Let's get right into this video. So point number one is the history of the influencer. So I'm gonna speak about this in the lens of my demographic. So a young black girl that is growing up in the millennial and generation Z era. The history of the influencer dates back to the idea of it girls, which I discussed in my previous video. Women being revered for their beauty, their fashion trends, their overall look, and their appeal in pop culture. I feel like that was the beginning of what the influencer is today because they essentially were influencers without the title, but they had more of an organic approach to work because it was a new concept and most of those girls were tied to entertainment and entertainment is going to have a lot of eyes regardless because back then tv magazines movies were the primary source of entertainment for a young person nowadays it's whatever is on your handheld device so after that it girl era in the early 2000s once social media started to become a thing the influencers started to evolve but i think the original influencer had different intentions than they do today back then those ladies taught us how to do our hair told us what beauty trends to follow gave us realistic and attainable ideas on lifestyle and everything in between. And just from the girly girl aspect, what they promoted was accessible for the average person. Back then, the feasibility to exist in the realm of beauty was so much more simplified. And existing in the idea of celebrity-like showmanship was really revered, meaning the average person actually did care about the opinions of the OG influencers and specifically YouTube content creators being the new stars. I remember watching YouTube back in the day and feeling way more connected to whoever I would watch because it was was realistic and what they were giving me was something that was accessible whether that was a product a diy project the comedy sector and even commentary so once all of these social media platforms began to grow so did the focus of the influencers and i think all of that parallels as these platforms grew and evolved and had more features the original influencers adapted with them and so it paralleled into an actual influencer culture where these platforms are revered for hosting these regular people who have a little bit more clout than the average person but then these so 
so-called influencers are utilizing these platforms to connect with regular people and show them different trends, life hacks, and everything in between. And that was the golden era. I would say the golden era of YouTube was anywhere before 2017, back when creativity was at its highest. So now the most recent leg to the history of the influencer comes in when business is starting to realize how lucrative an influencer is. And I think reality TV played a role because a lot of reality TV stars were promoting their Twitter accounts and things like that, which then in turn created TV watchers to go follow them on a more personal level. And then was the catalyst in creating influencers and people that were revered on social media. Even the idea of verified blue check marks for certain figures on social media wasn't always there, but it became a thing once we as a society showed more attention to all of these people. I think where influencer culture derives from is a lot of different factors working together. Essentially, it is a melting pot of the time period, technological advances, the digital era, and the overall ideology on the average everyday person being a sensation simply from the internet. So point number two is why influencer culture died. I think there are a million and one reasons why influential culture has died or is dying. And I would love for y'all to drop your opinions on it below, but I think we can all agree that there are stable things that have happened that caused the downfall. Starting off with people's interests being ever changing. I think there can be eras, but I think there can also be many eras. And as time progresses and social media becomes more rampant, our attention spans have definitely plummeted. And this notion of many eras being a thing is affecting a lot of different industries. And I think a mini era can actually be translated into the word wave, a wave of something or a short term trend in something. So all of our interests are evolving because a lot of us are getting older and realizing that all of the content that we have been consuming from social media influencers was more or less a phase versus a deeper and long lasting thing. So I think influencer culture is dying because the face of it just isn't as interesting anymore. Everybody has figured out the ins and outs to the influencer culture and it has been hijacked by big business. When big business first got involved, influencers were really just spokespersons and promoters for different brands. People did like that for its authenticity, but because influencer culture also created the subterm of influencer marketing, so many of us are really turned off with this push of commerce. It used to be that we looked at beauty influencers as a search engine or resource to help facilitate our consumerism, but now people flipped it to, I want to be these girls. I want to be in their skin. If I'm not living like them, then I'm a failure. And I think a lot of influencers actually capitalized off of the insecurities of their fan bases. And that's what a lot of them did for years until people figured it out. I think a lot of people are bombarded with buy this, get a discount on that, use my link for this. And that practice that they had did have a long run, but I think people are caught up now. And I do think the pandemic played a role because a lot of people realized that coming out of a time where money was really affected, it's almost impossible to keep up with the influencers who receive perks and benefits for showcasing all of these products. Another thing to happen is that influencer culture became too potent. Everybody's an influencer these days. Back in the day, there were influencers and then everybody else. Like some of the people on this thumbnail, these are OG people that I used to love and watch and I definitely think they helped influencer culture become a thing. It was a time where there were internet it girls and people really cared to go watch their content and those who really cared about consuming the actual influence. But nowadays when everyone around you is trying to be the next big thing, everyone around you wants followers and a lot of people have actually been able to become influencers. It literally takes away the exclusivity of it. And when people are in the club versus people attempting and or standing outside of the club and wishing to get in, it's not as worthwhile. This also reflects in a lot of beauty and body trends that have come and gone over the years. People have been raving about the BBL body trend for so long that now people are reverting back to a thinner look or aren't getting the more dramatic looking BBLs or other enhancements because it became way too saturated. So with that, people started to care less. I don't think influencers have the same pool that they used to have because because so many people kind of caught up onto other tricks. You can Google or YouTube anything now and find out the formula to be an influencer. And there's too many people either trying to be one or has actually grown to become one. It's almost like influencer culture has become this crabs in the bucket mentality where everybody is trying to climb to the top while still knocking each other out the way because it's too much competition where it's not even attractive anymore to people. I also want to touch on the fact that for the it girls, a lot of them were always revered for how they look and what they were. People care for them on a surface level capacity because essentially they were there for people to look at and people to aspire to be like until things change. Social media platforms became a lot more advanced and made features that gave influencers the stage to be a lot more transparent. So before when all we did was post pictures and videos and people commented, now you can go live, now you can host a Q&A session, now you can direct message people, now you can do FaceTime on Instagram, now you can do all of these features that allow the fans to be in closer proximity with these 
heralded influencers. And at first it gave influencer culture a surge because people do love and promote relatability. But the side effect was a lot of influencers started to show that they were not the best people. I think this was probably one of the most detrimental parts of influencer culture dying because these girls simply opening their mouths kind of ruined the appeal. Again, a lot of influencers were just good to look at, but when people actually got to know who they were, their thought process, the way how they speak, some of their beliefs that they have, it turned a lot of people off, slowly but surely. It took a while for a lot of society to catch on to influencers, not necessarily being the gold that glitters all the time. And I think over the last few years, a lot of commentary channels, as well as a lot of Twitter discourse has opened up that transparency to show how influencers aren't always the best people. And if we're being real, from my experience with working with other YouTubers and content creators, I do think there's a lot of people faking it for their fans. I've met a lot of girls who care more about what people think about them on the internet versus their actual influence being a thing of power. So then became the flex culture of promoting and pushing this idea that influencers are better than regular people. And a lot of people ate that up. A lot of people went broke trying to be like these girls. A lot of people would spend a lot of their earnings on what it girls were promoting. But then, like I said, once a lot of these girls got to the peak of their influencer culture, which I think was probably between 2014 and 2019, what goes up must come down. And it definitely came in the package of other influencers as well as regular people showing how detrimental influencer culture can also be. So of course the good side of influencer culture has always been being able to relate to somebody who is just like you, being able to learn from somebody who is just like you, and being able to support somebody through a screen who is just like you. But there's always bad apples on the tree. And I think society started to realize that a lot of influencers always aren't worth your unwavering support. People started to question some of their motives. People started to question why they themselves were extending so much of their finances to these products. People started to question why certain gurus would make heinous and salacious statements and still have a big fan base. People started to question why their mental health was declining for not looking a certain way, even though the influencers were secretly enhancing their bodies and their looks and their fan bases didn't know. And piggybacking off of that, a lot of the beauty aspect of influencer culture became cookie cutter. Every girl had an enhanced butt, enhanced breasts, small waist, big upper lip, chiseled nose, high cheekbone, and even some people started doing the buccal fat remover trend. And it looks crazy, but that became the look. So when all of the influencers are on one card to push a certain ideology, whether it's a physical thing or an intangible aura of luxury or whatever it may be, it definitely became detrimental. I think the current state of society is everyone is very outspoken and lives a life where a lot of their business is being plastered to social media for people to consume. And I think we are also at a point where we've seen the peak of influencer culture and it's now on the decline as we as a society are assessing what has transpired over the last few years. A lot of us are noticing that we became too consumed in influencer culture, that when it was at a good stage, it became tarnished by all of the outside entities infiltrating an industry that was at one point organic and at one point relatable and at one point actually influential. So my third and final point is the future outlook of influencer culture. So I feel like with the recent epiphany that society has taken towards influencer culture, it's obvious that it is on the decline. I predict that influencer wave will last at most another Another two years. Two more years of people still really being into the pursuit of influencer culture, as well as holding some of the influencers to a high regard. I think a lot of social media people have fallen off over the years, especially the OG YouTubers. And I feel like YouTube is like survival of the fittest because if you're still getting views and making some type of name for yourself right now, you survived the natural purge that took place during the pandemic. That's why I always encourage people to choose a line of influencer work that is kind of timeless. Beauty is timeless, but beauty is something that you always have to adapt to because trends do come and go. But commentary, commentary is timeless because of course news is changing by the day, but people's yearning to consume news doesn't go away. We as humans like to know what's going on. So much so that a lot of society now knows what's going on with influencers, so it just doesn't hit the same. I don't know if it's that society wants more authenticity and we feel that we've been consuming too much fake and contrived content, but I do know that a lot of people have caught on to the gimmicks of the social media influencer. Inflated views and followers that can be bought or can be inconsistent. The people who were just trying to make money and gain clout being outed or being overlooked for better content creators. And people realizing that they're trying to keep up with someone who may look like they live an average everyday life like yourself, but they really are promoting a lifestyle that is unattainable. And then also people just realizing that some of it is a waste of time and energy and mental stability. At this point, I think being an influencer is like the most self-sabotaging thing you can do for yourself. If you can't handle the strength that you need to really be influential, think about all of the YouTubers who used to easily get 100,000 views on their videos, even sometimes 1 million views on their videos, who can't even pull anything close to that now. And it's mainly 
because they focus too much on being seen as above others and being able to afford more than their average counterpart that their fan base is checked out and they couldn't maintain what initially made people attracted to them. Their allure took a downtick because a lot of these girls were not here to influence you. They were here to stroke their own egos once their asses started being kissed. And as an influencer or anybody who's a celebrity, you have to find that line of remaining humble, but also popping your shit because at the end of the day, you need people to be there to support you for your career to be maintained. There's something called retention, meaning the amount of people you can retain to your platform. Basically the percentage of people who keep coming back because they like what you do. And I think because the appeal has gone down, the retention of influencer culture leads me to believe that the peak has come and gone and whoever is left either is a true influencer or just kind of got lucky. So with that, I really think by next summer, people will be even more disinterested in influencers because a lot of people haven't recuperated after the pandemic. And if they did, a lot of people reprioritize their focuses. And I don't think influencer culture has to be completely that bad. I definitely think there's positives to it for the people who execute it correctly. But I do think for the average social media user, it is hard to tell who and what deserves your follow and your engagement. I think the future of influencer culture is really just based on the consumers. We've seen so many people come and go that it really does come down to who the people want to promote. So when you watch a video or you double tap a photo or you comment on somebody's page, be conscious of your engagement because it does affect who gets promoted and who gets seen. This generation does like to promote a lot of degenerate behavior and examples, but I think people are waking up and realizing that you can't place anybody on a pedestal above you and that numbers and likes don't necessarily equal money or morals or things that really matter in life. And I think on the influencer side, a lot of people realize that they could not keep up with what they were also promoting. Hence why I said I've been cool with YouTubers who have fallen off because they became mentally entrapped by their own influence. Feeling like they couldn't be seen without makeup, feeling like they had to have luxury everything, caring about who they rubbed shoulders with versus focusing on building their own platform. And a lot of the beauty and social media Instagram models are the girls who are now in their mid to late 20s and even their early 30s. And they're realizing that they're unfulfilled because of how much they spent putting on a facade. So with some influencers intentionally withdrawing from the influencer pool, a lot of the appeal to the industry has also died as a consequence. All in all, I just can't see influencer culture getting any bigger or better than it already has been in the past. It's almost like the gig is up because unless you were able to take your influence and flip it and evolve it, you're kind of stuck in the era in which your influence was even trendy. And I think society is moving more towards an informative and conscious mindset where people are aware of their mental instability and aware of their mental triggers and are aware of what they're consuming as well as questioning the need for figures like an influencer. Of course, I don't think that everybody will fall off. Some people will always remain relevant in the conversation of what an influencer is. But I think to the majority of society, social media and influencer culture is dying as people begin to actually start to live in reality. So that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please let me know your commentary on my commentary down below. What do you think? What do you know? Let me know. If you haven't already, go stream my song Ballin. It is out on all platforms and the link is down below. Make sure you check out the video as well. And last but not least, make sure you follow me on all of my social media networks and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye y'all. Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's go. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Let's go. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Let's go. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Let's go, uh-huh, let's go Everybody take note, yeah, it's Queen Chama rapping Africa West Coast, hear my song, wind your waist Everybody get low Got all my dogs with me like they out of pet coat Uh-huh, let's go, uh-huh Let's go, he see this brown skin ting, he can never let go Stop guessing all these joints cause they out of petro Ask God for all these blessings and they manifesto Extroverted, introvert, and honestly that's really me Went to school, I'm not a fool, it's never ever silly me Stomp a bitch out with my Tim's, yeah it's the Philly me Not saying I'm the goat, but I'm trying to be a Billy me Oh Molly Cha Cha Ma, rapping green, white, green Emo state, chop life with me and my team I'm the creme de la cream, gotta pay the top price Big hype, none light, one mic